It's been almost six years since I reported my abuse. Winning gold medals doesn't take away the pain of what happened. I'm going to go on this journey of healing. I had given away my voice for so long. She was so hurt. For me, healing was fighting. I just want to make sure I'm giving them whatever they need. A powerful message from Olympic gold medalist and sexual abuse survivor Allie Raceman. She is using her voice to help other survivors deal with trauma and work towards a path of healing. It's in a new documentary. It's called Allie Raceman, Darkness to Light. It's on Lifetime right now. Allie Raceman, nice to talk with you. How are you doing these days? I am doing well. How are you? Good. What was it like putting together this documentary? Because you had to relive things. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it was a really incredible experience. Um, you know, I think that survival looks different to every single person. And um, of course, there are moments where it's very emotional and it's, it's really hard to hear someone's experience and how, how much they've been through. Because obviously, I don't want anybody to go through something hard. But I also found it really empowering because I felt this special bond with a survivor, even if I hadn't met them before. And I feel very connected to survivors. It's almost like we know what each other's thinking um, without even knowing each other. It's really interesting and really special. So it was, it was so many different emotions. Of course, it was difficult. This is a hard topic to talk about, but at the same time, it, it gave me hope. And, you know, the show is called Darkness to Light. So hopefully, um, people feel hope at the end of it as well. What I liked about uh, this documentary is that you are in the power seat, Allie. Um, you have taken control of this situation. You were the one controlling the conversation and taking it to the next level. But you also admit in the documentary that it takes its own emotional toll on you. What has that been like? It's it's definitely a balance that I'm still navigating today. You know, I, I um, testified um, about a week ago, and I'm and I'm navigating. You know, how to recover from that. I think each time I speak out, it it affects me um, a lot. Each time, it's it can be very draining. It's um, can be very triggering because you're reliving that, and it kind of sometimes feels like an open wound. But um, it's it's a balance you know i think I'm, I'm human just like everyone else you know there are some days where i feel like i take a steps forward and i feel really good and then there are days just like everyone else where it's it's a little bit harder and you don't want to you don't want to get up when your alarm goes off and you feel a little bit off and a little bit um you know upset about something i think that's so normal but i've learned that when I, the way that I talk to myself matters. And if I were giving advice to a friend, I would say that's totally fine you feel that way. There's so many ups and downs. And so I try to, to say the same thing to myself, but it's definitely easier said than done. But I think therapy and having a support group um, and a community around me is, is truly everything. And I recommend the same thing for others. So in the documentary, you talk about your former team physician, Larry Nasser. We have a little clip from the documentary. Let's take a look. Every few months, there's another thing that's so public in the news about a coach or doctor. So while I've been filming, there was a coach that I spent a lot of time with. He was charged and ended up taking his own life. It feels like it's never ending. You also, when you talked about uh, Larry Nassar uh, on Capitol Hill, you were angry because you felt like there were a lot of people who turned a blind eye. Can you speak about that a little bit, Allie? Yeah, um, you know, the way that a survivor heals is, is linked to how their abuse is handled. And, you know, there's been unfortunately so many people that have gone to lengths to cover up our abuse and that is you know people from the FBI USA gymnastics and the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee and it is it's unacceptable it's devastating it's scary that we live in a world where there are people who cover up children being abused it's completely um, awful and i it's something that myself and my teammates and my fellow survivors are very passionate about 
changing. You know, we've been fighting this battle for many, many years, and it's um, it's frustrating because it's a, a child being abused shouldn't be something that we have to, you know, fight for children to be safe. So I think that's sort of, it feels, it, it's it's so hard for me to wrap my head around why we have to continue to, to publicly speak about this because it seems like it's, it seems a no-brainer to me. Why wouldn't everyone want to do everything they can to help keep children safe? So it's it's really disappointing. I'm wondering, Allie, um, when the time comes, you have kids, and perhaps somebody wants to follow in your footsteps. How will you react? Will you leave their side? What will you? How do you think you're going to handle this? Do you mean if if my one of my kids wants to do gymnastics? Yes. Um, you know, I think that. I'm really hoping that by the time that I do have a kid and by the time they're old enough to really want to do gymnastics, that things will ch change. I, I believe that by that time, things will change. I think gymnastics is a really beautiful sport, and I have learned so much from it. And the friendships I've made and the life lessons I've, I've you know, learned from them, as, as I'm so grateful for that. So I think I, I try in my head to separate the sport of gymnastics from um, the bad people in it because there are a lot of really wonderful people in the sport and I try to um, make sure that just because there are some bad people doesn't mean that the whole sport is bad. Um, so I do love gymnastics and if my kid wanted to do it, I would support them, but um, I would definitely, I'm hopeful that by that time and very soon, hopefully there will be positive change. Ali Raceman, I hope so too. You have our support. We're going to watch your documentary. It airs tomorrow. It's called Darkness to Light. Uh, it premieres uh, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock on Lifetime. Thank you so much, Ali. Thank you. Stay well.